Hello everyone, how are you doing? Welcome to today's CJ Scott. I am your host CJ Atem and it's always a delight and a pleasure to have you come on board and be part of the conversations that we have. You know what we say, we set up the jury, but the verdict is always with you. This is October already. Can you believe that? We're already in October. Hope you are keeping up well. Part of the things that were shut down are open and uh, I hope you will still take care even in this season. I know that the curfew has been moved to, uh, the curfew time moved to 11 p.m. Well, I don't know what you'd be doing out even at that time, but then uh, hope that you'll still be keeping yourself well and safe and looking out for your health. Today we want to talk about a very interesting topic. Before we do that, I wanted to hit the subscribe button on uh, my YouTube channel. So go ahead and do the subscribe. Share this stream as well because I've got a very interesting panel. I've got a very good uh, jury here. It's going to be very interesting. So share this stream, host a watch party, invite a friend, tag somebody and make sure that you are not watching this alone. I'm a Liverpool fan, so we don't believe in walking alone. So <laughs> just make sure. <laughs> well, I'm going to get into that because I have a reaction on the panel already. <laughs> <laughs> guys just cannot deal with success but uh, <laughs> just make sure you're not watching this alone at all but today um, I've got as usual two ladies and one gentleman most of the time that's what we do uh, once in a while we'll have two gentlemen and one lady but to balance it out we always have two ladies and one gentleman and today to talk about what I call the digital out of touch which is we mostly cover events. We will use our phones to take photos and videos of things that are happening, even where we need to just show humanity. And we will be sending out this, the videos will go viral of somebody beating up the wife, somebody who is stabbing somebody else, somebody abusing somebody. We'll be sharing and taking it viral, yet probably we could have done something to stop that. To help me talk about this, I've got to my father's left. Liliana Cage, how are you doing? It's good to have you here. Uh, please let us know who Lillian is. Um, Lillian Akech um, works at uh, Standard Chatter. All right. As a facility help desk. Okay. And um, apart from working from Standard Chatter, I'm um, also a commercial model. All right. I do adverts. Okay. Um, uh, apart from adverts, I also run a page. I do online marketing. Okay. And uh, I'm also a makeup artist. All right. Yes. Okay. Uh, I could I could hear some discussion between you and our makeup artist mm -hmm. earlier on. Like, do you know each other? Because she's also called Lillian. Yes, yes. You do. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, James Mark, he's not new mm -hmm. to us. He's been here. Yes. And he's not new to CJ Scott, neither is he new to controversy. How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not new to controversy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you're the one who was having a problem with the Liverpool statement. That wow. I made. <laughs> I think the Liverpool Arsenal game was a scam. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we are meeting again, uh, and I think we'll be You're able an to Arsenal meet them. fan. Yes. See, Chelsea is down, Arsenal is down, so please, let's not even compete about that. Um, but it's good <laughs> to have you here. Yeah, it's good to, to, to be back again here. Right. Yeah, my name is James Mahmi. Um, I'm a jack of all trades. <laughs> right. I'm a reformer, I'm a media consultant. I'm a director of uh, Ignition Africa. Okay. And uh, we deal with leadership development and uh, experiential mentorship, a couple with a couple of other things, cultural influences, okay. and I'm also a media consultant. All right, yeah, all right. Seems like everybody nowadays, you know, because that's the same for me. Uh, people have to do a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> Patricia, good to have you back. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Let's have you introduce yourself. I know that you have been very consistent. Um, with your leadership mm -hmm. and uh, corporate trainings, mm -hmm. but I don't know whether you've given birth to other stuff as well. <laughs> Not yet, though I look forward. Okay. My name is Patricia Ubiero. I am a leadership and corporate trainer. I'm also a counselor. I'm the founder of Patricia Speaks platform. Uh, it's a platform that equips, empowers, and nurtures the human spirit to become better. My good God. <laughs> All right, <laughs> and I am the host of the show. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we've, we've got this. Uh, the other day there was a video where that went viral, I think, 
of a mother giving birth in uh, Pumwani. Mm. But this is not the first of those kinds, because a few months ago we were dealing with the global outrage, generally global, of uh, George Floyd. And uh, when the Black Lives Matter started coming up, somebody actually recorded a video of this man um, suffering under the police, and he died. And the question would be, as much as we do capture these moments and get conversations around it, are we losing touch with humanity just because we are so digital? Anyone can pick it up. Yes, I think we have lost touch with humanity a little bit and we have become addicts of okay. our phones. All right. And I look at a recent research that says that an average person looks at their phone 96 times. Okay. That's about uh, once in every 10 minutes. So that's how addicted we, we are. That's an average and person. Yes, that's an average person. And I'm sure that also relates to maybe our social media platforms, Instagram, right. yeah. Facebook, we look at our phone that much. Okay. So I, I believe that we have lost touch with humanity and we have become addicts of our phones. All right. Yeah. You know, when you talk about that's an average person, so I'm mm. wondering what uh, somebody classified as an addict would be doing if the average person does <laughs> mm. 96 times then i'm just thinking of uh, the person that is classified as an addict somebody that actually needs um, a rehab <laughs> it could be more i think even millennials is more yeah mm. yeah it could even be almost twice the number all right mm. all right james yeah i think in the last decade we have uh, we, we, we we've had a social dilemma uh, whereby people are becoming so insensitive especially to things that matter most to humanity. Uh, for example, you, you know, uh, in, in days before, no one would take a video of a dead person in a casket. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, someone, it's easy for someone to take a video or a picture of a dead person and then post it on, on Facebook without, without necessarily thinking of their family members, without necessarily thinking of the people in pain. So what people are going through right now, the stages that we have been through in life have made us insensitive mm -hmm. in that we are, the, 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 the social life, the introduction of social media platforms, the introduction of Facebook, the introduction of Instagram, mm -hmm. Snapchat, now makes people become insensitive and in, 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 insensitive in a way that in our hearts we are looking for cheap publicity. Right. Cheap publicity in that we, we, we don't care what others feel what, in regards of, in regards of uh, what we are posting, what we are saying, so we can take anything and do anything at any point, not even our lives. Yeah. Uh, recently we, we, we had a story, I think it's a month ago or two months ago, of a lady who went to, to somewhere probably, it was, a, it was a waterfall, it was a waterfall. Then this lady decided to take a selfie. Now I was asking myself, how would you go at the edge of the waterfall and decide to take a selfie there, then fall over in, into, the, into the water and die? So the person who, who, who was, not, was not keen in observing right. probably those kind of rules and regulations at that particular time. So we are in a social, social dilemma. People want to post photos that will probably uh, be sensual. People want to post photos that will make them celebrities or draw comments without necessarily thinking of others and thinking of the, the, the repercussions that come around those things. Were we even prepared, Lillian, were we prepared for the let me call it the digital migration. I know that term was used mostly for media, uh, movement from analog to digital. But were we prepared for this? Because even beyond those extremes, I mean, in our houses, um, we rarely talk to each other anymore. <laughs> were we prepared for these gadgets? I think uh, we are not prepared for the gadgets because uh, we are misusing the gadgets. Yeah? Um, we've lost touch even in communication. Like, uh, we cannot have a one-on-one -on -one talk without even looking at our phones, yeah? Right. We cannot have a family or a gathering meeting without even looking at our phones. Our focus is just what is happening on social media. We lost touch completely. In fact, sometimes, you know, when you talk about those family gatherings, in fact, sometimes when people meet, mm -hmm. even people who don't talk much, mm -hmm. they very quickly will do a selfie. They will have posted it. Mm -hmm. They've not conversed. So the assumption is Patricia and I are close, mm -hmm. but all we've done is a selfie, mm -hmm. and you put it there. So what I could not say to her in person, so I'll put it over there, it was so good hanging out with you, Patricia, let's <laughs> do this again. <laughs> and we, we just could not say that face to face mm -hmm. with each other. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> and uh, there's the thinking that with the social media platform and the digital platform, we always want to talk to people who are not around us, mm -hmm. as we ignore the people who are around us. Mm -hmm. Is there a psychology to that? I am not quite certain if there is a psychology to that. Okay, of, of course, being a counselor, I am not quite certain if there is a psychology to that. I think it's just a behavior, a culture that we have adapted. Okay. And that we are now stuck with. And that I believe we need to be intentional about getting it out of our system right. so that we can also be able to be relational. All right. Mm. Well, but I, I, I would probably say this, uh, the, the psychology uh, around that particular behavior, because of the introduction of the social media platforms that are gaining ground, especially in Africa right now, mm -hmm. we, we were not ready. We were not ready for this. Mm -hmm. We were not ready for, for, for a YouTube channel or YouTube followers. <laughs> Most of us were so focused on Twitter and uh, probably Facebook mm -hmm. uh, because uh, Chris, you started a channel so many years ago, many years ago, probably people would not, would not see it coming that at some point YouTube will be the TV for the day. Right. And, uh, but the, 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 the thing is, there's a lot of manipulation, especially with the, with the people who are controlling social media. Right. The people who are controlling social media, the people who are controlling the probably companies like Facebook, companies like Google, companies like Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, all of these people, they are seeking for the human attention. And this, by seeking for human attention, then they have to manipulate you to like their, their product. Mm -hmm. right. TikTok has to be, to, to be competing with Facebook. Facebook has to be competing with Google, probably so Microsoft and all those people. So we are the pawns in this game. So we are the slaves. <laughs> the, the people are the slaves. Now, when people are the slaves, uh, the, we, the slavery happens when you unconsciously, so that you, you be, because you have been attracted to people and you, you want that, uh, publicity, that moment of 20 likes and yeah. probably 10 comments uh, that are more than your fellow, uh, then it, uh, it begins making you now desire to post sensational, sensational stuff. You want to post birthday parties, you want to post, you, you just came late to a wedding, you found a reception, you, you, all you want to post is a photo to appear like you are there. Okay. So because they have manipulated us to always be there, always be there and they're not doing that for us they're doing that for for the business right. for the business so that the business everything is monitored as long as you're on social media whatever you look at is monitored so the the manipulation has happened over over time and we have found ourselves in a place where by we always want to spend our time on social media because of what people are posting to see what other people are doing and we we we, we don't take time for probably the human interaction because human interaction is very important Right. So we have lost touch of human interaction. Now we are going to social interaction where we are meeting an invisible audience, but that one is taking away a part of us that is very critical. And I still want to dwell a bit on that. Mm. Uh, talking now from a cultural perspective, yep. Africans, you know, when we started, you talked about the thing of people, you know, taking videos of dead bodies and stuff like that. Africans were a bit more reserved with certain kind of info going out, mm -hmm. including even how they just mm -hmm. relate with their spouses everywhere, you know. Now we've got to start these YouTube channels based on our families. The video is coming, the cameras are coming into the bedroom, you know, <coughs> there's all of this. Where do we place our Africanness and these platforms? And um, are they really working for us, Lillian? <laughs> I think slowly by slowly, it's like you're losing our African touch because you're getting into now the, the Western kind of lifestyle. So we are dwelling, we are, we are diverting from the, our cultures and moving to, to, to the Western, you know, to the Western side, yeah? So we are, we are, we are so much into the Western thing that we are soon Diverting capsule, like we, we, we want to do like the Western guys are doing with the social media is just too much addictive, yeah? So even like normally when they, like the Western, they can, um, let's say to, something to do with the food. You want to copy everything like they do. They'll post them, whatever they are doing, pizzas in a hotel. You want to do the exact way they are doing the dressing. You want to do the, like the TikTok. I can see people are doing so many things on TikTok, something that you are not even, you know, aware about. You know, we've divided completely. 
and we're going to talk about um, that a bit as well. Like, I grew up in a generation that uh, you you respected, if not feared, your parents. Mm. So, I am I am well aged now, and mm. there's still certain <laughs> things. Before you put it there, if you just think that one of your elders will see yeah. that kind of a thing. <laughs> You cannot put it there. Mm -hmm. Is it also a generational thing? Because uh, now we've got this cultural conflict, but is mm -hmm. it also a generational thing mm -hmm. where people will wake up and take the photos of, uh, as Lillian is saying, the pizza, as somebody wants to show that they're living a certain kind of life. Mm -hmm. So you wake up in the morning and good morning and uh, welcome. I've just woken up and then you open the curtains and that kind of a lifestyle. Is it a generational thing as well? Yes, I think it is a generational thing, but before I say that, I want to humbly disagree with something that he <laughs> said. When he said that with social media, we are money. Is it manipulated, the word that you yeah, used? Yeah, I don't think it's manipulation. I think right. it's the concept of willing buyer, willing seller. Okay. Still so, manipulation. <laughs> right, it depends on how you look at it. No, so, it's for example, I sell to you this glass. Right then I have already told you what you need to do with it. Mm -hmm. But if you decide to go and wash your clothes here, yeah, that's up to you. Okay. Whatever you decide to do, to do with it, that's up to you. I, I think so I'll... I have seen people who have <laughs> intentionally refused what you call manipulation. For example, they use social media to their benefit. Social media, they feed from social media. They do not, how do I say, they do not give social media, rather they feed from it. It helps them grow in their personal development. Mm -hmm. So there are people who are intentional about that, and then there are people who, of just, course, have decided. Just tell him, let's let's <laughs> like yourself. Just tell him that you are very intentional. <laughs> let, me, let, me, yes. let me respond this way. Let me okay. respond this way. Even if you are, no matter how much probably you are benefiting from social media, mm -hmm. but you, as a probably an entrepreneur, uh, as a company, you are also using manipulation. You, you are, you are also using manipulation to get your clients. Because you will post things that you want people to see. And manipulation in this way, the news that make probably things that make news, is controversy. Mm -hmm. It's controversy. Yeah. They'll, they'll, they'll take a, a clip of the Donald Trump and post it there. <laughs> they'll not take the most important things for you to see. Mm -hmm. So that is manipulation. So the more you see it, the more... How, how is that manipulation, James, mm -hmm. when yeah. mm -hmm. you see uh, the thing that Patricia is talking about, mm -hmm. of the willing buyer, willing seller, so you go to a place, uh, let me draw back a bit and bring out something else. Mm. You go to China, people will talk about the Chinese products are mm -hmm. substandard. Mm. But the same China will make products for the developed countries. Yeah. And they will make very different quality for those countries. Mm. So are they manipulating Africa or is it the market that is demanding a certain kind of product to come? Is it the people who are using social media to manipulate the people, or they have understood the people and their appetites, and they know that, okay, if you want to go here, just throw in something controversial, because this is what these people feed. Is it the owners and the platform manipulating the people, or they've just understood the people? No, whether they have understood, because, <laughs> because the art of manipulation, the science of manipulation right. works on, uh, on, on, on the understanding of how human beings think and okay. their behavioral characteristics. Mm -hmm. okay. So if you have to manipulate any individual, first of all, you have to understand their need. That's why you are given 500 MB, 15 GB daily for free, so that you can buy uh, for 50 bob, and that is probably they have attended to your need but in a way they have manipulated you to buy into their product right. so manipulation has has decreased and concerns and manipulation it has <laughs> it, it, it is not a term. bad term yeah. manipulation is not a negative term it it can be used positively in that be, by you understanding the needs of the citizens then you you bring products or things that the citizens need and, the, and, and can attend to their various problems not necessarily what will, what will help them okay. in the future, but what can help them in their present situation. All right. Yeah. But again, generally, uh, and Lillian, generally, if people are on the social media platforms to do business, because Facebook is a business, TikTok mm -hmm. is a business, uh, Twitter is a business, YouTube is a business, all these guys are in business. If they're there to do business, bottom line is numbers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. They're looking for the numbers. Yes. So they're not sentimentally attached to the people. True. Um, 
did I hear right that uh, that's why they have to manipulate <laughs> <laughs> so they just want the numbers now mm. the person who will be probably selling products down at River Road would do the same mm. even without the social media platform they do the same. They'll take this and they'll tell you this mm -hmm. particular glass does not crack yeah. when it is put in heat. Mm -hmm. They will tell you this glass, you can take this glass and use it anywhere. Even when you go to the village, this glass can turn into plastic or whatever. They try to tell you that this thing will meet your need. Mm -hmm. Don't you think that there's a responsibility on my part to analyze the information that has been given to me and uh, then to decide whether that information is true or not? I'll take it again. Yeah, it's, it's our choice to decide on what you feed your mind on social media and what, what you take and what you're not using, yeah? So, but uh, I think we are, we, are, we, are, we are in a... James is not in very... <laughs> <laughs> no, no it, it's okay, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's, it's upon us to choose which direction you want to follow. If you want to follow that now, I'll be posting news, that is what you're going to get your followers with, then... Some are into that direction that I want to make out of my followers because guys have followers, yeah? Some people have followers out of the bad things they post. Some people have followers mm -hmm. out of the good things they post. So it depends with an, uh, a, a, a person on what he or she wants to, to, to acquire. All right. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to come back now to where we started about the issue of social skills. Mm -hmm. Because from a very young age today, children are with gadgets. They're not learning how to communicate properly. Mm -hmm. uh, if they are going to communicate probably with somebody else who they don't think is their age, they probably will just use one word answers. It's yes, no, yeah, whatever it is. Um, so they do not quite interact. They hang around each other. Uh, they'll either be playing with gadgets or checking out the rest of the gadgets. Is that the place where we actually begin losing this social touch in the fact that children do not interact as much, they do not relate with people as much, they do not speak as much. Sometimes they're given gadgets so that they can keep quiet mm -hmm. uh, just to distract them. Is that the place where our problems begin or that is a reflection of the problems that we have already had? I think it's a reflection of the it's problems we've had because it all begins from the family, especially in the urban setup. Uh, so many families, uh, uh, the children do not really interact. There's little or limited human interaction, especially in the cities, because the cities are congested. There's, there's no fields to play. There are a lot of things. There are a lot of things that are happening in the cities. If, if, you, if you go down, uh, probably uh, downtown, you'll find that people interact more often because they don't have phones. But the reason uh, most people downtown. Yeah, no, just in quotes, quotes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether you can use the word town. I thought you would say in the rural area. In rural area, I did want to, I did want to use the word rural. <laughs> I did want to use the okay. word rural. But uh, you find that because we have, we have been brought up, uh, uh, probably the gener recent generations have been brought up in closed doors. They are not, they, they, they don't have the art of communication. They don't have uh, the bubble to talk to each other freely, to open up freely. Uh, they probably some people come up and uh, post things on Facebook. If someone is hurting, they would rather post it on Facebook than just share it with a with a close friend. Right. And uh, and that is the problem because we've been raised up in closed doors. Uh, most of uh, the people who have been raised, the millennials, they have been raised up in closed. They have been raised up playing uh, PlayStation, uh, watching watching games, watching cartoons. If you find so many homes right now, children are watching cartoons. They are on cartoon networks from morning. Uh, probably the only break time is to study and do your homework and then go back to cartoon or probably do a dance class, watch YouTube classes and do dance. So and that I'm one has really that. affected the human interaction. I'm shocked that mm -hmm. um, even cartoons now, mm -hmm. they are cartoons that have cast words. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that the cartoon cartoons. cartoon has changed. Cartoon has changed. <laughs> it's no longer the, the kind of content in cartoon nowadays. There's witchcraft. There's homosexuality. There's mm. curse word. Mm. So what are our children uh, feeding on? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I our the African culture is a culture. If I remember our our culture so well, it's a culture of unity and togetherness. Right. Right. And then we have the Western culture, which is the culture of individualism. Yeah. I am. 
I want. For us, it's Ubuntu. I think they, we call it Ubuntu. Right. We, I am because we are. Right. And so the Western is the individualism aspect. So it is I want, I need, I can sue you, I can do this, I can do that. So I think we have changed our culture right. from the African culture to the Western culture. And it's affecting us. And then we don't even know how to go back to our normal culture. Because right now, like you're saying, I give my children gadgets because I'm, 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 I'm a working parent and my husband is also working. Maybe the children are just with the nanny. And so when it's too much and we do not want to interact with them, we give them gadgets. So then they get busy. And like when us guys were being raised up, there were very many things that we would do. For example, if you have a garden, your parents would take you out, you would go and dig, you would go and learn new things, you would go and plant flowers. Right now, we do not do that. Right. So we have gone back to what you're saying, I'll, I'll take the camera to the bedroom mm -hmm. because right. I want people to see that on YouTube. And so it, it began to affect us then. We did not realize it, but I, I believe now it's, it's worse because now we, we are able to see the fruits of that. When you talk about, you know, uh, we don't know how to go back to, the, to our Africanness, I'm not even sure we are trying to. <laughs> no, we don't have an option. We don't have an option. We have an option. <laughs> I don't think we that. actually have an option yeah. because because right now and 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 this is not well, what I'm saying. Maybe will not be for everyone. Yeah. But right now we have people who they teach their children their mother tongue. Right. And then we have people who just do not. Their children only speak English. So when, when, you, when I go to countries like, for example, Nigeria, you'd find that they are very intentional about their children learning their mother tongue. One particular woman that I came across one time, I was asking her, why do you speak to your child in Igbo, one of the languages? And she said, I take my child to school so that the teacher can teach the child French, German, English, whatever it is. But my work is to teach my child Igbo. And it's because she is intentional about it. So you find that in some countries, I think Nigeria, Zimbabwe, some parts of South Africa, their culture is still very strong. Ghana, their culture is still very strong. So you can actually go back if you want. But I, I think for this country, we don't have an option. Uh, very, very few people have that option because we will ask ourselves a question, who influences our culture? Right. Who influences the culture in Kenya? Mm -hmm. the, it, we, we adapt from the Western culture. Mm -hmm. It is the West that influences the culture in East Africa and probably most African countries. Even Nigeria and South Africa and all those countries, they are influenced mostly by the West. Very few countries are influenced by the East. Maybe we <laughs> yeah, but, 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 but with the growth you know, of African version, yeah. well, Africanness is actually West Africa. Yeah. Uh, when, when Kenyans talk African, mm. If you want to dress African, we're dressing. We're dressing like yeah. Nigerians. We lost our identity. Yeah. So, so <laughs> I'm, 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 Chris, it is very difficult for us to, to even as much as we are intentional about this, with the growth and the civilization that is coming, especially in the African countries and in African cities, right. with a civilization comes cultural, cultural uh, changes. With a lot of civilization brings out technology. So as you as you go to more remote places in Africa, they are they're experiencing the effects of civilization. And very soon probably with the digital uh, the digital growth and probably the spikes on social media, you'll find that our culture will be long forgotten. Even the child that you're trying to teach your mother tongue doesn't want to identify. They're in denial. They don't want to identify with your mother tongue. As much as you'll try to teach them Luya and Luo, they don't want to speak that. They want to sound English and, 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 and a light tongue. Yeah? As you say that, you know, <laughs> so um, they will not want to identify with that. As you say that, and not to, not to digress, because I'm going to come back into the, our out of touchness. Um, as you say that, I've seen, for example, music is one of those greatest vehicles and uh, reservoirs of culture. And Tanzania, for example, mm -hmm. they've kept the language. Mm -hmm. But then there's an aspect also of their music that is not quite African. Mm -hmm. So that they have retained Swahili, mm -hmm. but then the beat is not very African. <laughs> it's this mixture. Uh, South Africans have managed to do that as well. And uh, even musically here, so you'll hear people, they'll be rapping in Shang. Mm -hmm. But then the beat is not, <laughs> is not African. So I don't know whether the retention of the language alone is a retention of culture, because you can have the language mm -hmm. and still not have mm -hmm. the culture. Mm -hmm. uh, the elements like of respect and honor and of society and 
who are the elders and what foods do we eat and how do we treat these kind of people. Uh, the other day there was this discussion on uh, the people who were uh, you know, coming against the president's mom. Oh, man, we grew up in days where you don't talk about people's mothers. <laughs> <laughs> so whichever language we are using, there are certain tenets that I think are being lost. Mm -hmm. And so they, the kids may be learning English and French and every other thing, but there are certain tenets that are being lost. That even if we decide right now, okay, let's teach our children the mother tongue, mm -hmm. but we still stick around our phones. Mm -hmm. We cannot have conversations. We have no respect for elders. We have no respect for seniors. We talk anyhow to anybody. I'll come into your event and not respect the fact that you should be the one who is letting out photos and bring out photos out of your event before you even have your photos. <laughs> I mean, I was at a closed, I was at a closed ceremony at one point mm -hmm. and two hours down the line, we were ready on killing money, moms. And you were. This was a 20 people kind of a setup. These people made sure it was totally private. And somehow, among the 20, mm. somebody is itching to let this thing out. Yeah. Among the 20 that are trusted, do we even have trusted people anymore right now with the digital stuff? People are running after sensuality. <laughs> Do you even have people who, who you can trust? Like, uh, if something is happening around you, you sit around friends right now, you do not even know who's recording a video, mm -hmm. you do not know who's doing a screenshot. Do we even have friends? I think what, what you're talking about uh, when you mention tenets, it, it takes me back to values. It's like we do not have any common values. Our values are totally different. And that is why I would go for this close gathering or close location and then decide that I'll be the one to put out photos first and not even the person who posted me. Yeah. So my values are, we could be sitting four of us, but our values are totally, totally different. Mm -hmm. So that is why, and I agree with you because um, the mention of, uh, of language was just an example, like yeah. we do yeah. not teach our children language, but when we go back to the shared values that right now are not shared anymore, then it means that we live in one country, we have one culture, but then we are going totally different directions. Because you'd be chatting with one person mm -hmm. and um, <laughs> they're actually doing screenshots. Mm -hmm. Screenshots. <laughs> Nowadays you're not even safe. Mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> not even safe with your fiance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are people safe with their, with, with their spouses? Not even safe. So you have to be careful with even what, what you are chatting with your spouse because uh, anything happens and they are out there arranging on social media. Look at what they are posting. Uh, I remember there's a story of one governor, uh, Samia, uh, I think last year, uh, who was having some relations with a guy, with a, probably a signed chick or something. Then after Wakakosana, then this girl decides to release everything including the nudes and that's lack of respect and we, we, that we need to talk about that in a whole show <laughs> <laughs> but that is that a spouse well, that well, one just well, yes. i don't know maybe he was a maybe she yeah, was but, but i agree with you that even uh, with some spouses yeah. people have lost trust some mm. i want to be optimistic some some yeah some mm. but i think mm. on this there spouse, are some who still have shared but values. who would you trust really <laughs> there are people who still have shared values you you never because know you, you never know when the storm there are comes that are still genuine <laughs> you never in know our when the storm. time there you are friendships know. that are still genuine then there are people who are of course just fake it, it, and bitter. it, it mm. might take 20 years, but that email might be exposed, you never know. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Again, you see, as, as we get back into that, and, and we're getting close to, just getting to the place of closing, the element of trust, Lillian, the element of trust. Um, so you're relating with somebody, mm -hmm. either as a friend, it doesn't have to be a man, it could just be a lady or something, you're relating with this person, mm -hmm. you're opening up, you're mm -hmm. sharing your heart, mm -hmm. you disagree. Mm -hmm. The first thing you're just thinking about is, mm -hmm. I shared too much mm -hmm. with this person. Mm -hmm. Because it seems like the social media platform is more important than the human relations that we have. Mm -hmm. So as you talk with people, you text people, you're always just scared they can use something against you. How are we supposed to handle that? I are we even supposed to trust people? <laughs> with mm -hmm. this age and time, trust is just, I don't know, it's not there anymore. Because... Mm -hmm. Even in a relationship, when you're relating to maybe a boyfriend, a girlfriend, once you guys break up, there's that bitterness, yeah? 
So either one of them is going to go bitter and go to social media to vent. The other one is going to vent it out by sharing the screenshots of either the conversation you guys had, the nudes. I've even seen guys sharing nudes of their, their, their better halves. So it's just, I don't know. I don't know if it's just this, the way the society is changing. I don't know if it's just maybe the upbringing or the values. We don't have the way she, uh, mm. uh, my Has whatever Facebook he's saying. Has Facebook changed about the nudes now? I think Facebook has changed something about the no, news. Fes news. Facebook is controlled by machines, <laughs> so uh, by the time you are posting, it's going to confirm. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, this Facebook changed over the news. Are they controlling news right now? Okay. Uh, well, if right. you report, if you report I a case, check out with somebody behind the scenes. If you report a case, they, 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 they can do something about they it. They can do something but about it. But after how long? After, after, after many people yeah. have seen the, the whatever, the damage is done. Mm -hmm. Okay, so everybody must stay in their clothes. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> be, be careful, be careful. Be careful, you never know. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> just stay in your clothes, dress up PPE, hey. you know, just put on the full armor, <laughs> <laughs> including a mask. You just make sure that when you are meeting, uh, all the phones at the door. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Allow me just to add something on trust that you shared. I, I think at some point we got it wrong because the only person you should trust, and I believe this because I am a Christian, is God. All right. Like trust, give it to God. Love, give it to man. Okay. But we did the opposite. We love God, for example, and then we <laughs> trust, trust man. man. Because a man can change. Anything can change at any given time. Even man. And that is why I personally do not like using the word, I cannot do that. Because sometimes I do not know what I can do, even the day after tomorrow or mm. 10, 20 years down the line. Right. So I believe that the person that you should, if, if you're to trust, the person that you should trust most is yourself. You see, uh, now you've just contradicted right there. Because you said you don't know what you do 10 years down the line. Yeah. That means you can't even trust yourself. <laughs> I actually do not trust myself. <laughs> All right. Yeah, okay. I can't trust myself that much. So I was going to bring up this aspect mm. that as human beings, because we are relational mm. in nature, sometimes we get carried away. I mean, it feels so good to meet somebody and you connect with them that you sometimes forget and you just lower your guard. Is it good for that person to then use those moments where you lowered your guard against you? You know, that's what I'm trying to find out. Because you can't be careful, mm. you can't be too careful. Can't be too mm. careful. <laughs> Once in a while you'll find you are just sitting with people, you are laughing, you said something, mm. and that thing can turn. It's being used against you. You, know, you could be in a car with friends, you're just chatting. One of them is taking videos. <laughs> from behind over there. And you're probably just making conversations, talking lightly about even probably a serious business meeting. Mm. And you thought you just hanging out with your girls or your guys. And then this one goes out. You mm. lose a potential client or something because they get to know there's something you say behind the scenes. Yeah. It's becoming quite crazy. And I'll still come back to you, uh, Lillian. Mm -hmm. and, and then we get to the place where we nearly close. Mm -hmm. What are we supposed to do? Are we supposed to have a code of conduct around with our friends? Are we supposed to be putting aside phones? Are we supposed to switch off or jump the network when we are meeting? What are we supposed to do? I think uh, from where we are at, I think it's going to be hard, but uh, we can try and control ourselves. Just if you're meeting with your friends, just know we are here as friends to have fun and to bond. If you are as, uh, as a family, we are here together as a family and to born, you know. So we have to just have values on what to do and not what to do, you know. So uh, we can just come with a way of governing ourselves, get, get you to know what, where and where not to do. Because it seems like we're now getting, we're going to get to a place where people are going to have court orders <laughs> all over the place, <laughs> <laughs> privacy and protection that nobody can use my image anywhere without my permission. You know, it's a very crazy way uh, to do stuff. You think we'll get there, James? Well, uh, I think with the social media, it's, uh, it's a difficult place to be because at some, you, cannot, you cannot be too careful. Right. There are people that you'll meet and you'll become vulnerable. There are girls that you'll meet you'll become vulnerable with. There are men you'll meet and you'll become vulnerable with. And I, I'm, I'm being honest. You'll mm -hmm. become That's vulnerable true. with a few people. Mm -hmm. No matter how serious you are in life, yeah. 
mm. no matter how respected you are, there are people you'll meet and you you'll strike conversations, you say a lot of things, <laughs> but you don't, because in a, for a moment you'll be thinking, this one, this one I trust them. Yeah. Just mm. that moment of trust yeah. Yeah. and you become vulnerable and uh, it goes out there. This week I've been, I've been watching a video of a, uh, of a lady who, who, who was uh, in an interview with a socialite on, 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 on YouTube and she was exposing the men that she has slept with mm -hmm. and most of them celebrate. It is cheap publicity, whether it is true or not true. But look at this particular woman. That at the moment she was having that, whatever she was having, she was, she was having a good time. But now, at this particular point, she wants probably, she's not able to access those people and uh, she needs to be popular, then she begins exposing them. So these people became vulnerable to her at a moment, but they didn't know at, at some point in her life, she'd become foolish in a way to begin exposing them. So you cannot be too careful. But what, one thing that we need to do, Chris, I think each and every person, each individual, you have to be, you have to be careful, you have to to discern who to tell things. Right. Yeah? You, you have to know who to become vulnerable with. Because if I become vulnerable with her, probably, if, if in any case she exposes anything, I can make a phone call to her and, and tell her, by the way, uh, you're not doing the right thing. So we, we need to be careful with the kind of conversations we strike with people. You don't just meet any stranger in town and begin having serious don't conversations. Don't you think, James, that is part of the problem that is part of the, the thing that then eats up into our socialization. Like, um, so if I've got to be careful, like I can't open up, so I can't just be easy. Mm -hmm. I can't just have an easy conversation. Don't you think that then this thing is going to again drive us back into the place where I would rather be in a place where I'm talking to strangers. It has, it, has, it has already affected us. It has already affected us, not just in the world, but everywhere, in every institution, in the church, in our organizations. You are scared of telling the other person your issues because you're thinking, uh, probably I'm telling a loudspeaker, it can, it, can, it, can go, it can go wherever it can go, even at your workplace, even right. at your workplace. And that has affected the way people relate to each other because we are not free, we cannot open up freely. Okay. So it is upon each and every individual now to begin rethinking, to begin establishing leadership in ourselves so that we, we are now building up a social capital or probably come up with allies that you can trust. A few of them, probably 10% 10, 10 will may, may disappoint you, right. but make sure that in your in your in, in your workings and in your dealings with people you build up a social capital people that you can fully trust people who understand you people who believe in you so that you can be easy, easily open up to them but if we live scared we will be we will we'll die with issues we'll go to graves with a lot of issues but Trisha, your closing remarks because yeah. um, we were given a bit more time but our time is up right now your closing remarks we an individual should be able to segment their friendships all right so know who are your confidants, know who are your cheerleaders, know the person who is probably stands in like a coach or like a mentor. Yeah. So do not take every single person and put them in one basket mm -hmm. segment. Mm -hmm. All right, Lillian. I'll, I'll, I'll support her remarks, yeah. We, we need to know our circle because we have different circles. Like now in the social media, they are friends, they are acquaintance, and, and then they are now true friends, the ones you've known longer. So you'll just know what to share with who, you know. You have to put that boundary on who to talk to, who to run to when you have this issue, who to, to, to have fun with. With that, I think we'll have minimum problems with now our circles. All right, James. Mm -hmm. There are so many, uh, there's so much happening on Facebook. Uh, don't, don't be fooled by the number of your followers. Mm -hmm. so there are some people you need to know how to differentiate between need and love. Mm -hmm. There are people who need you and probably they don't love you. So love with your head, not your heart. Because if you put your heart into everything, you'll be fooled. You'll tell some people things that they don't need to hear and soon after they will you don't have to say everything. You don't have to say all your problems to everyone. So just know the people who need you and those who love you. All right. Yep. You know, information is very powerful. And uh, probably the most powerful thing after information is the platform to use that information. And social media is just a platform. How we use it totally depends on us. Now, the information that we get, uh, sometimes we use that then uh, in the platforms that we have, on the platforms that we have, 
and we use that either to build or to destroy. When you're taking photos and videos of happenings and events around you, when you are taking screenshots, when you are sending out things over there, when you are secretly recording conversations, well, you have information, you have a platform. If you don't have the power of sound, soundness, emotionally, you can be very, very destructive. Now, those who always have the platform, they want to live a private life. Those who don't have the platform are always seeking the platform. The thing that you want now may be the thing you'll be running away from tomorrow. Well, till the next time, that's all the time that we've had on CJ Scott. And I hope that you will go out there and have meaningful, personal, human relationships and that the digital world will not make you be out of touch. Remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Follow us on social media at CJ Scott Official. That is for Twitter and Instagram, CJ Scott on Facebook as well. Till the next time, we'll see you.